Well, there's just something nice about that name. <laughs> Take your Bibles, go to John chapter 14. Amen. John chapter 14. That's great, great. I was sitting there, I was back there laughing, man, crying, laughing, crying, laughing. It was funny. I like it. I like it. I just like my Bible. My Bible's the craziest book in the whole wide world. Uh, you, can't, you can't beat that book uh, with a stick. It's a personal book. It's always been personal. It always will be personal. It's a great book. It never was intended to be corporate. It's a personal book. Now we can all get together and read it like we're going to do right now for a second. Uh, but it's, it's meant to talk to you, you alone, and get you to move in the direction that the Lord wants you to move. Uh, actually, excuse me, chapter 10. I messed up. That's a scribal error. But I'm not a scribe, so it's okay. I can do that. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Go down to chapter, verse 24. The Pharisees and the scribes are trying to get him to, uh, to pin down what he says. They want him to say words so they can hold him by the words. And when anybody starts uh, really attacking words and, and playing with words and all that, they're, they're, they've got an ulterior motive behind what they're doing. Uh, the words of God are pure. You don't need anything but this thing right here. You don't need a thing but this. This is it. But when they start playing with words, they say, well, you said. Well, that's what they're trying to do with Jesus. Uh, 24 says, then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, how long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I told you, and you believe not. There's the problem, belief. It's always about belief. Always has been, always will be. Faith and belief tie right together. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my, hand, my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stoning. Father, again, thank you for your blessings this morning. Lord, there isn't a name uh, any better than that name right there. That's the best name. It's a name above all names. It's a great name. Uh, Lord, it's the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a blessing it is to be in church today. And Lord, just to be able to talk about him for a few minutes and all the great things he's done, uh, Lord, for us and to us and, and with us. And Father, one day uh, we will come home to be with you for all eternity. And when we do, we'll know that it's because of the blood, the precious blood, of the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world that got us there. Lord, I pray that you'd bless this meeting this morning, this, this service, and this, uh, this few minutes that we're sitting up here talking. Uh, just pray that you put your hand upon it, and we'll praise you on you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Almost every crazy book, crazy book, crazy book. you got 27 books in your New Testament. We were just out there talking a few minutes ago about that. It's an amazing Bible you hold in your hand. Uh, which, how do you know? It's, it's true. It's, it all gets down to what he just said right there. He goes... Uh, I told you and you believe not. The Lord will tell you. He will personally tell you some things. And he will show you some things, but your level of faith is always uh, going to grow throughout life. And he's going to start down at some basic things. And no matter what you do scientifically, you cannot prove God. All these people that, that sit out there and try to prove this and prove that, prove this, prove that, you can't prove a bit of it because it comes with faith and it comes with belief. You have to have faith and belief or else you're never going to get it. You can sit there, and I was talking about the book of Job, an amazing book Job is. Uh, it's got four characters. Um, if you throw Elihu in there, I like Elihu because I can hear God all over that guy too. Uh, you got Job and his three friends. And when I read about his three friends, his three friends have an understanding of God, but they do not know who God is. They have a knowledge of God, but they have no idea who, that, who God is. Job, all the way through there from start to finish, I can hear the Lord talking right through Job. So you can see that, hey, here's four men, and the, the three of them, three of them will try to tell you that we know what's going on, and one of them actually knows what's going on. Uh, that's God. God will show you stuff like that as you read your Bible and you go down through there. But your word of God is, is a strange book. 27 New Testament books. Of the first 27, of 24 of those books, the very first verse talks and mentions the name of Jesus. That should tell you something right there. That old book, the other three will mention him by the third verse. It's all about him. There's one man that walked this planet one day, 2,000 years ago, and the whole world revolves around that man. And no matter what anybody says, it doesn't. He's got some names. All three, I got 99 of them listed here. I don't know if I'll say all 99 of them. But he would be definitely worthy of all 99 of them. 
Uh, advocate, he's your advocate. He's the almighty, the alpha, the omega, the amen. <laughs> I like the amen. Under the, you know what amen is? It's used to express solemn ratification. I'm done with it. Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. Amen. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I know exactly. I'm not going to go back on that thing uh, as an expression of faith, a hearty approval. There is nothing wrong with saying amen. If you agree with what's said, you go, amen. Have you ever heard a preacher saying, okay, can I get an amen? <laughs> you shouldn't have to fight for an amen. Amen. Not this. That's his name. You know, that, you know what the amen is? That's Jesus. He's the it. He's it. in. Apostle of our profession, arm of the Lord, author and finisher of our faith, author of eternal salvation, the beginning of uh, the creation of God, blessed son, blessed and only potentate, branch. I think somebody has got a, an affinity for Jesus Christ. Bread of life, captain of salvation, chief shepherd, not just a shepherd, but he's a chief one. He goes, Christ of God, consolator of Israel. Uh, cornerstone, counselor. How about that one? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. That's his name is Jesus, by the way. It's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Creator, Dayspring, Deliverer, Desire of the Nations. They don't know it yet, but they will one day. He's the door. You ever read that John chapter 10? He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that enters not by the door. The door is Jesus Christ. You get through your Bible all the way through there. He's named all through there thousands of different ways. I mean, every time you turn around. He's the door. He's the elect of God, everlasting Father, faithful witness, first and last, first begotten, forerunner, glory of the Lord, God. God manifest in the flesh. That's Jesus Christ. <laughs> you ain't going to miss this thing, man. Uh, uh, good shepherd, governor, great high priest, head of the church. Heir of all things, holy child, holy one, holy one of God, holy one of Israel, horn of salvation, I am. I like that one. Tell him I am sent you. That, you don't need nothing more than that. I liked it in the garden. He goes, I am, and they all fall down backwards. Just a voice coming out. Oh, man. Wouldn't you like to be? I hope he has reruns up there. You know, we watch, if we sit down here and watch Andy Griffith over and over and over and over and over again, where you can actually quote every word being said by everybody, uh, then you ought to be able to go to heaven and at least sit through a rerun or two. Uh, the Holy One is the horn of salvation. I am image of God. Man, I tell you what, when you get in your Bible and you want to find out how Adam was made, he was made in the image of God. That's Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, G judge of Israel, the just one, king, the king of ages, king of the Jews, king of kings, king of saints, lawgiver, lamb, lamb of God, leader and commander, the life, the light of the world. The line of the tribe of Judah. You can't trust nobody else. <laughs> you, got enough, you got enough names. He's telling you exactly who it is and who you can trust. And all you got to do is trust him. Uh, the line of the tribe of Judah. Who cares about the, uh, as a roaring, the same as a roaring lion. I got the line that su supersedes that line any day of the week. The Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, Lord of our righteousness, man of sorrow. You ever read that, man of sorrow? You know, Isaiah 53? What he did to get us into heaven. Whew, man, I'm telling you. You're talking about somebody to follow. You couldn't follow anybody better than that. Mediator, messenger of the covenant, Messiah, mighty God, mighty one, morning star, Nazarene, only begotten son, our Passover, prince of life, prince of kings, prince of peace, prophet, redeemer, resurrection life, rock. He's not a rock. He's not a stone, by the way. Cephas is a stone. He says, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Catholic church takes that like it's them. They're the rock. No, 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 no. The rock is Jesus Christ. Amen. You only need to keep it there. The rock, root of David, rose of Sharon. He's just as sweet, it's just as sweet as a flower. But got thorns on it. You've got to watch him things. Uh, Savior, seed of woman, shepherd and bishop of our soul. For ye were the sheep gone astray, going astray. Boy, did you ever realize how bad you actually were? You ever stopped and looked at that thing and looked at you in place of where God's at and the Lord's done for you and what it took sin in your life for him to take it out of? And he goes right here, for ye were as sheep gone astray, but he took his time to come and find you, but are now returned to the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. Shiloh, son of, son of the blessed, son of David, son of God, son of the highest, son of righteousness. True light, true vine. I went to a church in, in uh, Norfolk called True Vine Baptist Church. Truth, witness, word, word of God. 
His name is the name above all names. His name is Jesus. Amen. Brother, you read your Bible, you know what gets you out of trouble is Jesus. Amen. You know what to keep you straight is Jesus. You know what we don't have enough of today is Jesus. Amen. We have everything else. Look, you can do whatever you want to do. But when it really comes down to it, how much do you love the Lord? How much do you really care for? You know what they got up here saying about? They're singing about Jesus. They're not singing about me. You know what's wrong with it? We start looking at each other and then we want to try to compare ourselves among men. That is the stupidest thing you ever do. You and I are nowhere near each other. You actually might be smarter than me. I'm okay with that. I don't have a problem. I'm not, I'm not striving to be like you. I want to be like Jesus. I don't like somebody else trying to maneuver me into doing I don't like that. I can only do so much. And when I get to a place where it's starting to affect my walk with Jesus Christ, it stops. You know what? A lot of people just keep on going. No, I would rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus. I don't know about you. I don't need a whole bunch of anything. I'd rather have Jesus. Boy, I thank the Lord all the time. And he gave me a wife. I told her the other day, I said, you got me through this world. Uh, Beth may not be the wife a lot of people need. She's exactly what I need. To get me through this world. Apparently, I've been exactly what she needs to help her get through this world. Or she found the sucker that was going to help her. Whichever way you look at it, we have been together for 33 years and it's perfectly fine. Next week is Mother's Day. If you're not a mother and, and you want to be one. Jesse was back here talking about she wanted kids for seven years, six, seven years and could never have one. And got all mad and upset and just sad and angry and bitter and everything. But you know what you ought to do? Ladies, you ought to strive for. You may or may not ever have a child. That's in the Lord's hands. That's not in yours. You know what you do? You sit there and say, Lord, I just want, to, I just want you. If I, you know what's wrong with a lot of marriages, a lot of people, individuals, uh, relationships? All, it's, you try to add something else in there other than Jesus. You ought to be excited just about Jesus. If you got Jesus, that's all you really need. Guess what? He says, trust in the Lord the Lord, with all thy heart, lean not unto thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and Jesus, he shall direct thy paths. You know what you need? You need somebody to show you the direction. Guess what? If you're bitter today, you don't know the direction. If you're sad, you don't know the direction. If you're upset, you don't know the direction. Or else you're right where you need to be, and the Lord's walking you through something. He'll get you through it. But never forget, man, I, I, this is good. I like it, man. John chapter 10, great verse. He knows your name. You ever, you ever, look at John chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door, but uh, uh, by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep. By name. Well, you know something that just was just thrill your soul. All that thrills, all that thrills my soul is Jesus. I got it wrong. He is all in all to me. You know what? When I know I'm sitting there saying, Lord, he's a Mike. Have you ever sit there and been praying, or you sit there and reading your Bible, and it's like the Holy Spirit saying, Mike? Mike. I heard a preacher one time preach a message, and he was going through that thing, and he's talking about the cross and how he said, my name was on Christ's lips on that cross. He said, Lord, I'm doing this for Mike. I, I'm, I'm a selfish kind of guy. I think it's all about me, really. When I come to my Bible and I'm reading this Bible and I'm sitting there looking at this thing and, and I see what the Lord's doing, I think it's all about me. Me, 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 me. Proverbs is my son, my son, my son. I think it's about me. I think he's talking to me. I just think the Lord's saying, Mike, 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 you're a moron, you're bonehead, you're a sinner, you're wicked, you're no good. And I'm like, yep, yep, got it, man, I've got it. I'm with you, I'm with you. I said, but thank God you saved my soul. <laughs> I never was worth anything, but thank you that you did what you did at Calvary. And before that, thank you, all the stuff you did and you ever did to get me into heaven because I wasn't worthy of that. I never was worthy. I told you on that back porch that I wasn't worthy. And you still saved me anyways. Well, I thank God for that. The name of Jesus is above every name. You know what our problem today is? We let that name kind of come down into the crowd with a bunch of other names, and it's just kind of there. And it's not there. No songbook. You read these songbooks, man. Somebody done stole all the songbooks. I ain't going to steal Amy. She'll get mad at me. You read that songbook, 500 and something songs. That's all right. 500 and something songs about one man. 
And you can pick up song book after song book after song book, and there's four or 500 songs. And some of them are the same as this. You're going to end up, I know Fanny Crosby wrote 9,000 songs about one man. Sounds like she loved that guy. Yeah. Have you ever loved Jesus? You know what you'll do about Jesus a lot of times? You'll start looking at Jesus, and you'll forget about all the other stuff that goes on in this world. I had a brother that uh, called me this morning, and a, a, another guy I went to school with passed away, uh, uh, Dennis Black, and y'all pray for his family. Uh, and there was only three of us that I knew of that was still in the, doing something for the Hammond Church or pastoring churches, and, and Dennis was one of them. And now he's gone, so it's Dennis Mile and myself, uh, the only two I know now that are still pastoring churches. Others may pick them up. I don't know. I don't know what's really happening to all the rest. But I knew about these three, and, and I'm sitting there going, Lord, I said, I've been in this thing for 47 years, 40, 44 years now is I've been saved. And it's growing, and I'm getting older and older and older. And all my friends are starting to go on to the other side. And if you're going to go, the, Dennis went the right way, man. I mean, he finished his course, and he went on. The Lord took him. Uh, but me and Brother Dennis Miles still got to go for a little bit further. But down in verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. You know you're known of the Lord? You're not just, once you get saved, you're not just a normal everyday person anymore. You're actually known by him. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. You know what that means? You should know him. That means you ought to be looking for what he wants in your life and not what you want. I like Mary at the tomb, man. He's sitting there, and he goes, Mary? Boy, you're talking about, I could have just imagined her heart just being lifted up like to heaven. She's sitting there talking to these, these men, and she thinks that the angels she's talking to, she thinks Jesus is the gardener. And what would you do with the body? What would you do with Jesus' body, my Lord's body? I'll go get it. My Lord is dead. I like it where he says, you do err not knowing the scriptures. He said he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of the living, not of the dead. Your Lord is living, Mary, but you didn't get that thing. But he held that voice back and never said it, just like he did in the garden when he said, I am, and everybody fell down. He waited and waited and waited until the time was just right. And Mary is sitting there, her heart's broken, the body's gone. She wants that thing that she can still look at and say, I know that that's my Lord sitting right there. And I still, she didn't understand the resurrection until he goes, Mary. And she goes, Rabboni. She turns around like, woohoo, yeah, man. You talking about somebody excited? All of a sudden now she sees Jesus standing there talking to her. It's not a vision, man. It's really him right there talking. He says, go tell my brother and I'll be there. I'll see him shortly. You, I'm telling you what, brother, this thing is the craziest thing. It's a name above every name. Sometimes we forget his name. And we forget. You know you're a sinner. Of course you are. I am too. And you know what you got to do? You got to learn how to live with yourself being a sinner. He wasn't. Grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. You know what he got you out of? It was your sin. Lazarus. So for Mary at a tomb, Lazarus from the grave. Lazarus come forth and a dead guy gets up. Nobody else can do that. Moses and Elijah just appear on the side of a mountain talking to him from heaven. So he gets them out of tomb. He gets them out of grave. He pulls them out of heaven. He talks to them. And then Zacchaeus is in a tree. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. Jesus wants a little bit of everybody. He just wants a little bit. Of, he doesn't care whether you're a scholar. He don't care whether you're the, the dog. I like uh, Brother Spurgeon gave me that nugget. I can't ever get it out. Every time I think about that guy, I think about Brother Spurgeon now. Because I was sitting there talking to him one day, and I said, I would just soon be the beggar at the rich man's gate, full of sores, getting ready to die than the rich man any day of the week. I read Luke 16. I'd rather be the, the beggar. He goes, yeah, he goes, the beggar is in hell, man. He lifts up his eyes, no name. He never tells you what happens to Lazarus' body. I'm like, yeah. He goes, you think the dogs ate it? <laughs> they were licking all over him. I said, hey, man, it could be. I don't know, man. Just, you sit there thinking about that thing. The body doesn't matter anymore. You know what matters is where Lazarus was. He's down there. He came Lazarus, but the other Lazarus, this Lazarus right here was actually in a tomb, and Mary and Martha was there, and everybody was crying. Jesus was weeping, and he said, Lazarus, come forth, and there's, there's somebody who has power over the death of a body that can take a body that Brigham Morris has already said. They said it's done stinketh. It's been in there four days. You think that bothers him one bit? Some of them guys have been in the ground for 4,000 years. You think he, he bothers him one bit? He just goes, poof, there's a new body. See you later, bye, let's go. Quit playing around, Zacchaeus. But those, you don't want to ever forget. He knows your name. He's got it. He knows your name. 
I thank God he knows my name. I thank God that I, I, like, I heard a preacher preach the other day and say it's something about a, about a week or two ago talking about Paul, Pauline epistles. And in Pauline epistles, you'll never hear him talking about the white throne judgment because that's not where you're going. Paul talks about the judgment seat of Christ. That's where we're headed. I like that, man. I, I said, Ben, why would you waste time talking about something you're never going to go to? What you need to do is be concerned about where you're going and deal with that one. But Matthew 7, 21 says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say in that day to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? There's a lot of people out there who mention the name of Christ. There's a lot of people out there who talk about it. He says, and in thy name have we not cast out devils? They do things that will make you think they're right. And, and in thy name have done many wonder works. And, and he said, I will profess unto them, I knew, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. There's a place called hell, and one day people will actually go there. And they will be totally forgotten one day. All tears out in the future out there, all tears are going to be wiped away. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, and a new heaven and earth is going to be made. And all that stuff, it's going to pass. And Jesus is going to wipe every bit of that away. And these people, their names, they, he don't even care about their names because they're not his. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He knows their name. You know, the most important thing you'd ever do in life is get saved. There is nothing more important than that. Anything else pales to that. Knowing Jesus Christ and him crucified, he walks with you and he talks with you. And he, we just outside there talking a few minutes ago. And a young lady back here had great questions. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, man. I, I said, I, I go back to the day I got saved. I didn't know everything. I didn't know which Bible was the word of God. I didn't know none of that stuff. I just knew that I was in trouble and he had, had to have the answers. And if I was going to trust him, I mean, there, who else could I trust any better than Jesus? Really, honestly, when you look at it logically, if you look at all the people on the face of this planet, who could you possibly trust more than him? He hears your cry. You know, he heard mine. I'm sitting here going, okay, man, I got it, man. The president can't help me and nobody else can help me. And you're the only one that can help me. And I'm coming to you. Will you help me? And I just kept doing that day after day after day after day. Hey, you up there in the sky, will you help me? I don't know what to do. What do I do? And one day I found that little white Bible in my attic. And I started reading that thing. And it was like out of that little white Bible. It says, hey, Mike, I know your name. How about this? What are you going to do with that? And what are you going to do with this? And how about this right here? What are you going to do? And then what are you going to do with that? I said, well, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I said, but still, what do I do about my sin? I don't know what about that. It's still, then he shows me Matthew 7, 7, judge not, least you be judged. For with what measure you meet, it will be measured. I'm like, wait a second. If I don't judge somebody else, you won't judge me. And the Holy Spirit, God's my witness, said, yep, you're right. You got it, man. If you don't judge somebody else, I won't judge you. I said, okay, I'll never judge anybody ever again, which was a lie, because that's not true. I couldn't do that. I have already done it. I've probably already done it right now. I'm judging you as it is. You're laughing at me. That's fine. I'm sitting here going, okay, I can do that. But then that same little voice, that small, still voice in my head said, but what are you going to do about everything behind you? I'm like, well, that just messed up my loophole. I said, I thought you just gave me a way out of this thing. He goes, no, I'm showing you the way out. But you got to accept a couple things before you get there. What are you going to do about that? I said, well, now I'm right back where I was at. No, you're not. Keep reading. Six verses later, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock. At the door, and it shall be open unto you. You know what I did? I asked, ask where, the only logical thing. Ask where, seek where, knock where. What are you talking about? You know what I realized? That little book was talking to me. That little book knew right where I was at. That little book knew I needed to be right in Matthew 7, 1 through 5, 1 through 7, 8, 9, 10. He knew exactly where I was supposed to be. And the Holy Spirit, through, people say, well, you took those out of context. Don't really care. I got into heaven. It worked. Tell the Holy Spirit that, man. You know, he can it's his book. He can do whatever he wants with it. Right. He knew my name. But there's some that ain't, ain't going to be there. The rich man in hell didn't have a name. He was in torment. He was thirsty. He had everything. Lazarus, the rich man knew who Lazarus was over there. You know, one day when the Lord died on that cross, the thief on the cross said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
And the Lord looked at him and said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. So the Lord changed Abraham's bosom's name that day to paradise. And now that thing sits in heaven. And that gulf in hell opened up wide and, and consumed the whole thing. And those people down there will never see the light of heaven ever again until they get pulled out of there, get judged at the white throne judgment and thrown in the lake of fire probably. And you sit there and you look at that thing and look at that thing and look at that thing. I'm like, Lord, that was, that's not me. I said, Lazarus looked across and Abraham looked at all. He said, son. He didn't even call him by name. Yet the rich man looked across and said, Father Abraham, Lazarus. He called them by name. They had a name over there. He doesn't have a name in there. You're a no-named individual in hell. And I'm sitting there going, Lord knows my name, but he don't know theirs. He's done forgot them. He hears their voice. He answers their cry. Man, I tell you what. His mother sits there and he goes, Jesus, we ain't got no water. We ain't got no wine. They drank all the wine. They're out of wine. He turns seven firkins of water or, or some pots of water into wine, the best wine you ever had. The woman at the well coming out there delivering, just picking up water, taking it back, and he's just sitting there waiting to talk to her, and he hears her cry. Inside her heart, she's just sitting there hurting constantly, knows that she's been married five times. She has no husband. She knew that. She knew that she was away from God. She had no hope. She was looking for something. She didn't know what to look for, and one day he's just right in front of her. You think he chose her by accident? No, he knew exactly where that girl was. He went right to where she was. His name is Jesus. That's the only one you need today. You don't need nothing else. You know what? Anything else will cause all the other problems to just magnify. You throw Jesus in the mix, guess what? What would Jesus do? I'll tell you what he'd do. He'd do all kinds of stuff. He'd do the right thing. And the right thing is what that book says. But the only way you're ever going to do this is get in that book. And he's going to teach you and step you through it step by step. Well, I don't like to read. Man, I'll tell you what, I don't know who died. i got a couple kids who like to read. I just, I never did. I don't know. I've never sit down and talked to them and asked them if they like reading the Bible. They like reading all these love story things. You know, Harlequin, you know, I love him, he loves me, and we're going to live happily in a, in a place where, where everything looks like it's, you were in this rich place and we're all wealthy. And, and they never tell you how they got the money. But that's, you read these stories. You read this Bible, man, they're broke and they're running and they're living in ditches and holes and caves. And I'm like, man, I said, that's my future. I said, I like that, man. Honesty. He answers her cries, the woman at the will. She starts talking to him, and her spirit starts swelling up. She goes, hey, I want to drink that water. I want, I want that water. I want that water. He goes, oh, you do? You know, he didn't tell her right off the bat what it was. He led her into it. You know what? This Christian walk we have is our Lord loves us so much, he just walks you into it. He's got time. So do you. You don't have to be in a big hurry. Take your time with Jesus. Learn how to love him like he loves you. Take some time with him. He's a great, he's a great God. Jairus, Jairus. His daughter was dying, and she actually died. He comes to Jesus, and Jesus goes and heals him, heals her. Changes his life, too. I like Blind, Blind Bartimaeus is one of my favorite characters. And Zacchaeus, I like them two guys. I just like them. Here's Blind Bartimaeus sitting by the roadside. Here's Jesus come by. Hey, Jesus! woo You, over there! I can't see you. I know you. Yo, you could be over there. Oh, no, maybe. Maybe you're over there. I don't know. Hey, I need my eyes! Jesus, shut up, man. Shut up. No, this kid wouldn't do it. You know what's wrong with a lot of people? You shut up when you shouldn't. You never say nothing when you should. You're afraid to. Blind Bartimaeus wasn't. He already had, he had no sight. He had nothing. He was begging for everything he had. He's at the bottom of the barrel. You know, sometimes you need to get to the bottom before you can look up. He couldn't even look up. He was so far down. Lord stopped. <laughs> said, what do you want? Well, what do you think he wants? He wanted to hear him say it. You know, you need to say what you want. Have you ever prayed? You ever asked the Lord for something? Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Have you ever asked for something? And you really meant it? Blind Bartimaeus meant it. You know, the rest of that crowd, nobody in that crowd. I like it, man. That lady who had an issue 18 years, 12 years, 18 years, whatever it was, she, she never asked for nothing, man. She just said, if I can go up and just touch the hem of his garment, just, just, just the hem, he'll walk by and he'll never know I did it. Oh, wrong answer, minus five. You can't do anything that he don't know what you did. You think you can get by with it? You, you can't get by with what you're doing. You're doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. You can't get by with it. Believe me, I know he can be trusted with your, he can answer your cry. He can, he can be trusted with your life. There is, who are you going to trust your life to? Well, I like being on a ship in the Navy. I just like that. It might sound crazy to you, but I liked it. I, just, I thought it was fun. 
I'd, get, I'd go work myself to death all day long. I'd go jump in my rack and go sleep. A thousand men. I had no idea who those thousand men were. Actually, 999 of them. <laughs> you take me out of there. They could be mass murderers. I don't know who they were. I will lay me down to sleep. I'd jump in my rack. They probably all went away from me because they heard just snoring an animal over here somewhere, and they just didn't want to be nowhere around me. I don't know. But, you know, I didn't care. With a thousand men, I could go to sleep anywhere. We went down to Kings Island one time, and everybody wanted to ride this Tomb Raider ride or whatever. I didn't want to ride it. But they had these, these chairs out front that you could test to make sure if you were too fat, you couldn't get into the thing and pull it down. So I figured, I said, well, my wallet's in my back pocket. They're all in there riding. I said, my wallet's in the back pocket. I hadn't had my nap yet. I said, uh, and they can't get my change. They can't get nothing else out. I said, to get it, they're going to have to wake me up. So I, I jump in one of these things and pull it down on me. And I'm... <laughs> Everybody in Kings Island's probably walking by like, what is wrong with this moron here? I didn't care. They came out, woke me up. I said, let's go, man. Yeah, we're out here. They said, what'd you do? I said, I got my nap, man. I'm ready to go. You can lay down anywhere. He'll take care of you anywhere. You can you trust him with your life. You know, a lot of people don't, they don't trust him. You get in a car going 85 miles an hour down the road, and the only thing separates you is two yellow lines. Sometimes just a dotted one. And, and you're doing this. Car after car after car, and you think you're something special. Boy, if he didn't protect you, you know how many people would be dead? That's a crazy thing, man. Any mechanics, anything, you can trust him with your life. I like Matthew 6.25. It says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought of your life. We worry way too much about what, what this old fleshly body has. And a lot of times when you do that, you start removing Jesus out of the picture. I like it, man. You get in the Old Testament, and he says, why didn't you come to me and ask me before you went to doctors, before you went in? When you go to the doctor, do you ask the Lord first? You get down on your knees and look for peace from the Lord. Peace, peace that passeth all understanding, the peace of God. And then he sends you to some place, and you know if he sends you to the doctor, that's where you go. There's nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't want to go to one without it. What you shall eat, what you shall drink. This world is crazy, man. My daughter is, I mean, Either she's crazy or I'm crazy, or we're both crazy. I mean, all this organic stuff and all this other stuff. I mean, I don't know how you can eat. I don't, how you can tell what is and what isn't. And I ain't got time to worry about all that stuff anyways. I'm going to stop and get me a McDonald's Big Mac, and I'm going to try one of those double Big Macs if I can ever find one one day. They used to have one. They put two burgers on it. If i got to buy two Big Macs and throw two buns away and make my own big one, I'll, I'll make it. I don't worry about that stuff. I like a doctor one time, most doctors, you get, you get in there and somebody 80, 90 years old, and they oh, you got to watch what you eat. I was telling my mom, she's 92 years old. She said stuff like that. I'm like, Mom, you're 92 years old. I don't care what you eat by now. Who cares, man? Oh, if I drink diet soda, yeah, it's going to kill you. You're 92 years old, and you've been drinking your whole life. You ain't dead yet. It's probably preserving her. <laughs> Doing something, man. And 92, who cares? Man, if you can just move and breathe at 92, that's a, that's a blessing. But who we care about what we're going to eat and what we're going to drink? This whole society has got you set up on it. Got us all set up on that. Your body's more than meat and it's more than raiment. He says, look at the fowls of the air. We got a family here who got some ducks they're getting rid of. You look at them birds, man. You just start watching chickens. Even chickens, man, they lay eggs. I like eggs. I had an egg sandwich this morning. Eggs are good. Amen. Eggs are good for the soul, especially with sausage. <laughs> eggs and sausage. I heard, a, I heard a preacher one time talking about a chicken only gives you the egg, but, but a pig gave it all. Right. So if he had to give up his life for you to eat that bacon and that sausage, man, that chicken can still lay another egg. But I still like the eggs. But I'm telling you, you know, you sit there and look at that, you just watch some of that stuff, and you look at what God has done. And I know as a baby Christian, you're, you're going to look at it. But I start looking at that stuff, and I look at my hands, and I look what he did. And I'm sitting, I, cu I cut this finger real bad uh, under the knuckle there, and it's already about healed up. And I'm like, this is an amazing thing, man. I, the doctors, oh, we could do this. I don't do anything, man. I like watching my body heal itself. I mean, I got scars all over the place, but it's cool, man. You sit there and watch it, and it, and it, and it about 10 days it heals itself, and then pretty soon you don't even know you got a scar there anymore. 
And I'm sitting there going, this is cool as anything. And you look at grass and trees and, and I can look out my back door and we still got a, all the backyard there and everything's greening up. And you sit there and look at all that stuff and just different things out there and bugs flying all over the place and everything. I'm like, Lord, this is cool as anything. You know, but in a day, you don't think like that when you first get started. Evolution or God, evolution or God. Then you start saying one plus one is two. Well, if two is this, then that. Pretty soon you start, and evolution goes off to the side, and, and God comes in there more, and then more stuff starts. And then years come down a path, and you just start glorying at what God has done. Glory to his name, man. I mean, have you ever stopped and said, just glory to God? I like Psalm, man. Psalm's a great Psalm. You ever read Psalms? I think it's praise ye the Lord. I like, I like Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Yeah, yeah, you ought to. Why aren't you doing it? Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you praised God? Man, I tell you what, I sit down in my room and read my Bible. And go, praise the Lord. And I sit um, They upstairs probably think I'm crazy. Praise him for his mighty acts. Do you give him the, the ability to do what he says he does? Do you give him the glory for what he says he does? Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with sound of trumpet. That's what we try to do around here. Praise him with a psaltery and harp. Praise him. You know what you're supposed to do is praise him. Brother, all this stuff, everybody wants knowledge. They want these sermons out here that lift you up to what, man? It doesn't change your life. You know what will change your life? Jesus will change your life. You start looking at him and just him alone, you'll get your eyes off everybody else. And you'll start putting them right back on you where they need to be. And you will change to be like him. And what you'll find out after a while, you'll say, why in the world did I do that earlier? Man, I tell you, there's nothing to be like him. He sits there and says, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we be clothed with? Who cares? Just keep modest, man. Don't do this. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's what you ought to do. You can trust him with your life. You can trust him with your security, your, your wealth. Brother, you ain't going to take nothing with you when you leave this place. Why do you even think it's of any value now? You ever looked out in space, man? I sit there, when I got a hold of that thing that the, the Jews are going to get the planet. Israel's going to get the planet. Now, this is the basic plan. When it's all said and done, Israel is going to get the planet Earth. It's not yours. Nothing here is yours. That's why they get everything. It's theirs. It's not just a little bitty piece of land over there called Israel. It's the whole planet. Then the body of Christ, those that are believers who trusted Jesus Christ, New Jerusalem is going to come down. That's what we get. I hope we don't get limited to just that. 1,500 by 1,500 by 1,500. I know it's a big chunk of uh, land or a big chunk of uh, a pyramid looking thing coming down. But it's the galaxy is what the Gentiles get. Man, they're going, we watch Star Wars and Star Trek and all that stupid stuff. And I, I watch it too. It puts me right to sleep. I like it. That's really what's going to happen. Not that way. God's way. When God does this thing, it'll be blasted out there and you will get a galaxy or two or whatever you're going to get. And, and it'll keep you busy for all eternity because you'll need it for all eternity. And, you, and people will, kids will still be born. All that stuff's going to happen. But it's going to be the right way. God's preventing it until he gets to the right thing, man. Your security. I have nothing down here. He, your joy and peace. John 14, 27 says, peace I leave with you. You know how you can tell if you're walking right where you, it's not everything's going good. It's when you're going through whatever you're going through, you got peace. Jesus Christ says, my peace I leave with you. My peace I will give you. Not as the world giveth. The world can't give you anything. They give you stuff, take it away. Give you stuff. Look at Trump. And this isn't a Trump message. I really, I mean, they're trying everything they can to take away everything that man has to keep him from trying to be president of the United States. When your con constitution says anybody can come up through the bottom anywhere they want, no matter who they are, and become president of the United States. As long as you can be a convicted felon and be a president of the United States, you just got to be 35 years old. There's all kinds of stuff you can be. Uh, so if they convict him, who really cares? He can still be president of the United States. They think, oh, because, because you, you say he does this, 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 everybody's going to hate him. You bunch of wicked, hypocritical pigs. You're wickeder than everybody. But you're not. You're so into the thing that you don't see the thing. And there's no peace. They have no peace. They can't. They get so mad. You ever seen somebody talk? You know what's funny? You watch somebody talk about the Republican Party or Donald Trump in, in particular. They just go off out in left field screaming and yelling. They're almost like me. 
I'm sitting there going, what is wrong with these people? I said, you can't even mention a guy. Now, most, most Republicans you can talk to, and, and they're okay. They just hate him or whatever, but you're talking about somebody. It's like he's going to steal everything from you like this world is all they have, and that is true. That's all they have. He says, my peace I leave with you, not as the world giveth, give I, I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You shouldn't have to worry about it. I mean, just the, the world is going to go down the tubes. It's going to get all messed up. Everything's going to happen bad. My brother's sitting down there. They could call me at any moment and tell me he's gone. Uh, he could come back out of this to somebody else. It, it, that's what life is all about. You're born and you die. When I heard that guy, so whoever said that to me, I forget who it was. You're, you look at every tombstone I've ever seen has a date they start and a date they finish. And, and somebody said, your life is the dash in between. What's your dash today? What's your dash? You will have a dash shortly. Or the Lord will come back and take you. You will have a dash. You know, you can have peace and joy and happiness all through this thing called life. There's been people that has hurt their whole lives physically or financially, but spiritually have that thing right and just be a joy to be around. There's been people that had everything that you could give them on a silver platter and still just as miserable as they could be. You know what that is? They don't have Jesus. The name is Jesus, by the way. That's the name. And then you can trust him with your eternity, and I'll stop here. This message really is a eternal security message. <laughs> I like it at the end. I, this is one probably my favorite verse in the whole Bible. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I, I was so happy in 1980 when I finally heard his voice. I read it in the book, and I seen it there, and then one night he woke me up in the middle of the night. He said, hey, meet me on the back porch. That's where we've been talking. Let's get out there and talk. And I go out there and start talking and talking and talking, and, and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. I'm, my, God's my witness. I thought he was going to come sit right next to me, sit down right there. That's, that, is what, that is what he had done to me so far. He had got me to a place where I thought heaven was going to open up and he's going to land in my garden back there. How, why? I don't know. Open the gate. Ee, come through that thing in pitch black night and come over and sit right next to me and tell me what I need to do. And I sit there probably an hour and a half, two hours, and he never came. I sit there and waited and waited and waited and waited and waited. 22 years old. I wasn't a little kid. I was 22 years old. I found a book. I started reading it. I just thought that's what he said he would do. He said he would do it. Call upon me. Call. I called. But he never came. Like that. He came. I just didn't see it. I'm sitting there on that back porch and my life changes and next three weeks, it took me three weeks to really grasp what happened. And when I figured out what happened, it floored me because my life had started changing and I could not I could not put my finger or my thumb on what caused that change. So I went to see my uncle, and he told me. He said, Mike, you got saved. I said, what is saved? He said, you trusted Jesus Christ. I said, yeah, that's what I did. He tried to, down the Romans road, he tried to win me to Christ. I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that. You know what it was? I, I looked at a name named Jesus, a man named Jesus. And I let everything else go off to the wayside, and for some short period of time, I just looked at the man named Jesus. And I said, my church, the Catholic church, always had you up on a cross and, or a little baby in Mary's arm. You were never a risen, living Savior. And you're saying, I need you now. And I mean, he came off those pages, and I'm sitting there reading that thing, and I see Jesus coming off those pages. And that's what I need, and I knew that, and I didn't know the words. You know what I, need, knew what I needed was Jesus. People say, well, if you didn't say this, no. I think you just need to know you need Jesus. I've got some old preacher friends gone now. They're not here anymore. They said, hey, I don't think you get saved when you come to the platform. I think you get saved when you stand up back here in the pew and you get up and say, I, I'm going to go down there and trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. He said, I think right there is where you got saved. Yeah. That's where the change took place was right there. Down there, you're just affirming that. But down there, back here in the pew is where it was at. My sheep hear my voice. You ever remember the first time you heard his voice? Boy, that's the sweetest sound I ever heard. I mean, you can't get none sweeter than that. My sheep hear my voice. I was glad he knew I was his sheep. And he cared enough about it to come and find the one that was lost. I know them and they follow me. I'm glad he started showing me a path to follow. You know what's wrong, wrong, wrong with most people? They don't follow that path he sets in front of them. It's easy, man. He'll show you two ways. 
And you look down that way and you won't see him. You look that way and he's down that path. That's the path you go down. And you just keep doing that until you get to a place out there. Sometimes he just backs away and says, here's the choice, make it yourself. Other times he'll say, no, right here, you got to make this path. And I give unto them eternal life. Man, I'm going to quit right here. I got over 100 verses right there. And there's more than that on eternal life. John 6, 37. And, and that the Father giveth, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you come to Jesus, he'll never throw you out. And I give unto them eternal life, John 10, 28, and they shall never perish. John 5, 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. 3.16, everybody knows that one. Romans 11.29, for, for the gift of, and calling of God are without repentance. When he gives you something, you don't take it back. You ever, you ever worried about losing something? This is one thing you can't ever lose if you get it. I got it, man. I got it. I remember reading that over in 1 John where it says that you may know you have eternal life. You know what I did when I read that? I'm a little boy back, back 40 years ago, 42 years ago, something like that. I read that, that you may know you have eternal life. Well, that means somebody can't know it and somebody does know it. I said, why can't I know it? I want to know it. Isn't that something good to want to know? Is that you're going to heaven and there's nothing you... You know what a blessing is? The name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, the blood that he shed at Calvary. I can't do nothing to get out of what I did. There's nothing so bad that I could do. You know how many people say, well, the Lord just don't love me because I... No. That's, that's foolish pride and arrogance. His grace is greater than all my sin. And guess what? His grace is all, all than yours, greater than all your sin too. I ain't going to read all these, although I should. They're really good. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You know what he's doing? He's going to set you up. But the problem is, is you put something else in your life. If you're in here today and you're miserable, you put something else in front of you than Jesus Christ. Beth don't put nobody in front of her but Jesus Christ. Now she loves me and she does a lot of stuff for me, but Jesus Christ is number one to her. You know who's number one to me? It's Jesus Christ, not Beth. And not you, and not anybody else. 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know. Man, you can know it. I know it. I want to know it. I was so glad he let me know that years ago. That's one thing I have never had to worry about. That ye may know you have eternal life, and that ye, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. If you're in here today and... The name of Jesus hasn't been everything to you lately. You know what you ought to do? You ought to just say, Lord, that name, your name has not been on my lips like it should be. And the glory all through your Bible that is, is attributed to your name should be to you, not to me or to anything else. And I've slacked back on that thing about giving you the glory for everything you've done. You know what y'all do? There's an altar sitting right up here. I'm going to shut up right now. There's an altar sitting here. It says that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow. There just comes a place in life where you need to stop for a few seconds and life will take its toll on you and pull you down and try to tear you to pieces and do everything else. And the best thing you could ever do is go right back to where Jesus was, where that, that day was on a back porch where I was sitting there and the Lord just said, hey, Mike, come out here and let's talk. And I went out there and started talking to him. My life was never the same yet again. It changed. It changed. It was never the same. But you know what I had to do? I had to get my hide out of the bed and I had to walk through the house and go out on the back porch and sit there and talk to him. You know what you got to do? You got to get your hide out of that pew and you need to come down here and you need to talk to him. And you know what you'll find is the name of Jesus is still sweeter today than it was the day you got saved. Father, thank you for your many blessings today. Lord, there's so many hurts and pains in this world. And Lord, uh, you talk to us and you try to guide and direct our hearts and sometimes we'll listen and sometimes we won't. Uh, Lord, you can't make anybody listen. Uh, Lord, uh, you, they say you can lead a, a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But Lord, today, uh, Lord, I tried my best to get across how precious your name is and how precious you are. And Lord, it wasn't just precious for salvation. Lord, it's also precious for helping us get through this world and, and live our lives the, the way you'd have us to live. Lord, I know there's hurt in here all through the church, and there's people just got different things going on. 
And Lord, you can solve each and every one of those problems. I didn't say you're going to get rid of them, but you can solve them. Lord, you can help us to have peace through them. Lord, just be with, pray with you, be with our church. My brother's down there in the hospital today, Lord, and, and Lord, I don't know how much longer he's going to be here with us, uh, but Lord, uh, he's still yours, and uh, Lord, I remember the day he got saved, sitting in his house, when he told me he got saved, Lord, he, he just wanted what I had, and, it was, and I asked him what it was, and he goes, Jesus, that's all he wanted, Lord, it wasn't anything else, and he hasn't done a lot with what you gave him back then, Lord, but he did know one thing, he got you. And Lord, uh, I think sometimes we have just forgotten or let it go off to the wayside exactly how important you are into our lives. Uh, Lord, again, if there's anybody in here today, I just pray that you'd touch your heart and they'd come down and just spend a few minutes with you. Be the song service, the invitation. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.